is grouping position. Wait for that one to clear. That's a key point there. So if that comes down and you're trying to run down that ladder, you, you die. So it's, uh, there's a, there's a lot to be able to get to where you group well. Now the fireball's coming, so I gotta get in position. Cause he'll 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 dance up the right side and then go all the way to the top, like while you're in like two seconds if you're not paying attention. Uh, if it gets above you up to the top, it's a huge huge problem. So right now I'm sort of shadowing it. I don't want him to get up my right side, so I'm gonna give up this barrel, get over to the right, and get up here. All right, so the rivets. Um, I showed. I've been showing you that. I'm skipping that prize on the bottom now because see how fast they're spawning. Now see how they're all on the bottom. That's a perfect opportunity for the star pattern. So I'm going to skip this rivet. I'm going up. Now they're all like you know they've all climbed up a little bit, and I might be able to get a few of them if I'm fast enough. This didn't work out as well as it could have. But I, I could have gotten like you know all of them in this case they they started off in a really good position still not too bad though i got now i got to try and get to this next hammer and uh yep so this is pretty much exactly how the star pattern works get the, i even got that bottom rivet out of the way there are times when you want to skip that bottom rivet if the fireballs are not in favorable position Maximize a little bit there, and uh, that nah, that was probably a break even. If I had not smashed it there, I probably could have done a lot of taunting. Um, so anyway, that was the star pattern. It worked out pretty well. If I get to the next one, I'll try and do the the uh, the other popular pattern, which is the weave pattern. Kind of try and do it regardless of where the firefoxes are, just to show you. If it comes up the right side there, you have no choice but to grab the hammer immediately. So now, in this case, I'm not getting as many smashes because the fireball just didn't cooperate. I might have gotten like 9 smashes there instead of 11 or 12. So there is some luck factor as far as like how, how well you're going to be able to score based on what the fireball does. I do a lot of vertical jumping right there on the fourth girder because the, the wild barrel is an issue. If you're jumping horizontally, you can sometimes find yourself jumping right into a wild barrel. This is just me trying to get as many points as I can salvage while also creating a hole to climb up to this and get back in position. In this case, I can go up this way. See, the fireballs are in a dangerous spot now. I really got to get out of there. So I went ahead and just dumped a couple barrels. Got back up. Now I'm looking pretty soon to get in position because these fireballs are going to come up pretty soon here. So I'll try and start on this blue barrel. It didn't work out at all. <laughs> Screwed that up completely. Yeah, so this is what you don't want to have happen. Alright, so Pie Factory. It's actually better. This this is an example of the free pass almost being forced into it. If I had tried to grab that hammer, there was a chance that the fireball would have turned and gotten me while I was trying to grab it. Um, so that was a case where it was just out of safety to take the free pass. In the past, I probably would have actually tried to force my way into grabbing that hammer because there was so much there to be able to smash. It would have been worth a lot of points, but sometimes you just got to skip it. Again, 
again, here's a lot of barrels here, counting about nine, possibly ten barrels. I think it was maybe nine. And the fireball's there to be smashed. This is a big hammer. I missed the one in the very top. I didn't play this one very well. Let's see. There was at least two barrels I just missed because I got out of position trying to steer them. That was mildly risky the way I did that. Because uh, a wild barrel is an issue right there, like I was saying before. This is very risky. Well, it turned out to be very profitable. I'm hoping this fireball comes up. Now I'm hoping it stays down. <laughs> this is about to run out. It is uncanny how often they come up right at the moment when your fire when your hammer runs out too. So you really got to get a sense for when that's happening. Get out and get yourself out of danger. So this is like the safe way to point press is to wait for this fireball to come down and then go back up. So now this prize is wide open. It costs you some bonus to do it, but it's still um, more profitable than skipping the prizes completely. If I can get through, like on the first try, like I just did right there. You can get that th third prize, I'll show you that next time, maybe. And that's minimally productive. If you can get there without a delay, it might be worth two or three hundred points, because, you know, the prize is 800, and the, uh, you're losing probably four or five hundred bonus just trying to get over there and come back. But. If the springs are such that the, there's a wide open hole to go over there, then I do do it occasionally. So, gotta be careful of that scenario too. The fireball just charges you like that. So, that pretty much forced me to grab the hammer early again. Maybe get about nine smashes this time. Somehow I missed this one, I don't know why. I think it just wasn't steerable that time. So, I was in the right spot for it. So I went out of my way there to jump all those barrels so I didn't miss any. That could have been a 300 there, but I was not in the right position. And now we're back to the grouping spot, and there's no fireballs in play, so I have, you know, some time here to get some points if they'll group up for me. Right there, there's one. And I didn't steer. So sometimes they just won't steer. Gotta be able to deal with that. See so that one didn't steer. So you kind of always have to have a plan B when you're messing around with barrels, because like if they don't steer, you have to be aware of what will happen if it doesn't do what you want it to do. And uh, so you're, you're thinking sort of a couple of moves ahead in a way. Like you have to, you have to have a couple of different, you have to cover all your bases, sort of. And always have a way out in your mind, a way out of danger. In some cases, it's as nasty as uh, getting ready to do an invisible wall jump on the edge. Sometimes you can see the barrels, how they're it's lined up in such a way that if it comes down on its own without you steering it down, because sometimes they do come down on their own, maybe 20-25% of the time. And sometimes you can look and see, well, if that one comes down on its own, it's going to create an unjumpable barrel combination. And uh, you start running away from that ahead of time, so that if it happens, now you have enough time to possibly salvage it by jumping off the wall. And uh, Or the other way to do it is to climb up a broken ladder and let them roll under you. Um, you always have to be careful if there's any traffic above you, then uh, obviously that won't work because it'll do, the barrel will come down and get you while you're sitting on the broken ladder. So 
you have to think, you know. If you're not thinking about that like in advance, then you won't have enough time to react and, and perform one of those maneuvers. Yeah, I'll just finish this up. Another point about uh, being effective on barrels too is um, a lot of people when they're learning you end up kind of looking one level above you like the, right there like to steer that barrel down but it's actually important to also look two levels above you because you want to be as you're running a lot of times you'll have situations where you don't want the barrel to come down you want to like stop running temporarily and let it go by and a lot of times it's two levels above where you want that to happen because you want to be like running you know a certain way and you don't want it to come down and become a problem and uh, it's going to be hard to point out examples of when I'm doing that on the fly but like right there I was I was looking two levels up to try and beat um, I was trying to get past the ladder, this ladder over here, before the boost barrels rolled over there, so that they would not steer while while I was running. And if I was out of position, I was like further to the left, then I might have considered uh, waiting and letting them roll by, even though there were two levels above me, in order to get into the right position to get to the next level up. steer that one down on purpose to give myself time to get up here. So a lot of times grouping here you are trading off like you're, you're steering one barrel out of the way for 100 points uh, to give yourself a chance to say like right there I steered two barrels out of the way but I was able to get 400 points on the rejump so it's all like you're netting points but you're not it's not as good as you would think because you're, you are missing some along the way so this was just a terrible decision because I was talking. <laughs> but. Yeah, so you can't wait too long. When that fireball gets to that fourth girder, you immediately have to get in, get ready to grab the top hammer because it can come up quick on you. Here's again another chance for a free pass, but he blocked it. So now plan B, go grab the hammer. This is a chance. This is a case where I might end up losing points on the point pressing. See, I only had two smashes there, and I'm like in trouble. So this will be like less than 8,300 points, which I would have gotten for the free pass. But I tried to do the free pass, it just wasn't available. So that happens sometimes as well. See, I'm only going to get two prizes, and I lost a lot of bonus. And I only got two smashes. Uh, lost like looks like 3,500 bonus. So that was a bad pie frack. I might have only gotten you know, 6,000 points on that one, where a free pass is like 8,300. Which, when you're trying to get every little hundred points, <laughs> losing out a couple thousand on one screen is a disaster. So. You're always going to have, though, like two or three bad pie factories and two or three bad rivets during the course of a full game. That's why averages are tricky. Tricky things to figure out. Oh, I can average this many points, like per level and stuff like that. Well, it's different when you're working off a save state and you're just doing one level. <laughs> during the course of a whole game, things average out on you. You have bad screens pull down your averages. Here's a triple. So all all this time I'm like going down like in this scenario here I'm looking a couple levels ahead or up to see where those barrels are. 